messy. So this is my friend Sarah. <laughs> so this is one of my pastel tables. And it's just pastels oh on top of pastels. <laughs> yeah. And then I have another pastel table. So it's just a nightmare. I know for a fact that you would never live like this. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I just don't know if I should keep my pastels and all these individual things. I've been trying to think about just getting stuff like this and organizing them by color. But how does a real pastels do it? Do they go just by color or do they go by hard to soft? I mean, kind? You go by value and color. Value yeah, and so color. You take, you take these and arrange the dark ones at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Green to blue. Okay. Uh, or green to purple. Green, blue, purple. Uh, the dark and then as they go all the way up. So I need, the very lightest I need bigger Tupperware. I need They're bigger. Respective. Well, I don't use that there. Um, on the Blick, um, in the Blick catalog is a uh, set of three wooden drawers that you can pull out that are all in this little box, and okay. they're about this big, and that's what I have on my pastel I table. used to have something like that, but to tell you the truth, I got rid of it. Well, because but they work perfectly for putting all the pastels in. I guess I need, obviously you see how many pastels I have, yes, and I have be... more at home. And then put the hard ones separate, because they, you use them separately, differently. Right, right. And so put them uh, in their own. But what about stuff like this? What, I mean, they come in their own little beds. Oh, take out all, take the, all the paper off. Yeah, I know. Right? And um, then uh, just put all the different kinds together, your schminkies, your yeah. whatever those are, your unisons, your these, and then value yeah. color. Yeah. I know I have to do all that, the way across but the I have table. to, I see people with like really big bins. Mm -hmm. And okay, one of the issues I have is when I'm doing like a demo or when I'm doing a video, right? Like I need to tell people or I want to tell people, hey, I used a Unison or I used a this even brand like Blue Earth pastels. But if I take all the papers off and I take them out of their boxes, I completely forget what brands well, they are. Blue Earths don't come with papers on them anyway. You, you recognize them by the feel and the shape. Okay. So people are just have to get used to they have to learn them right because i do yeah because i was trying to kind of group like pastel lights together mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i have no idea like what see but i have a hard in with a soft but, so but that's this, illegal this, that's a hard this that is rembrandt I okay think. yeah you have rembrandt's yeah no i okay. got them all I, but you'll learn you you'll you'll learn <laughs> by feel yeah what they are this is a this is a unison but take the papers off okay and then, but then buy, I forget what then numbers. To, but like, no, no, what no, no, if no, I no. love this and like okay. I want to get more if you of love that? And you want to get more of it. What you do is Dakota <laughs> yeah. sells the the, the, the papers, okay. no, all, I need to all do the that. samples, and so you buy those. You put okay. them all in buy. one big, big um, mm -hmm. um, folder, and you yeah. say, "Oh, I know this is this was a unison." Yeah. You go to your unison. Samples, but does this just give you a lot is. of anxiety when you look at this? No, it doesn't. No, because it gives me anxiety. And you're a much cleaner, much more, look at this. I have things on top of things. And so I even forget what's underneath here. Well, I think first you have to decide what kind of structure you're going to put them yeah. in. And then you decide what kind, what you want under them. And, and um, something I'll yeah. show you, but a okay. little, I use plastic, just that whitish plastic. So it's kind of like a foam? Like a foam. Yeah. And I cut that to the size. It's almost like and this. I had a table. It's almost similar to that. Yeah. Yes. I had a table made actually mm -hmm. that fit those drawers mm -hmm. and those drawers work out really well because you can then pick them up, put them in your car okay. uh, and go out and paint. So you would literally just throw out all these wooden boxes. Yes. Yeah, I know. Cause I feel yes. guilty in a way. Um, okay. Well, thanks anyways. I won't make you keep talking about this, but I just, I wanted you to see this cause Sarah is a serious pastelist. And I feel that if somebody doesn't like give me the stink eye, and say, you need to like get a grip of yourself. I just will keep living like this and I don't I want to. I have a photograph on my iPad of my pastels. Okay. So that'll give you a bit. Another person that arranges theirs really well is Karen Margulis. You can look on her. Does she have a YouTube channel or? Yes. And Karen then Margulis. also, um, I'll think of the, uh, the other person's okay. name. She no. arra who arranges them the way I think you should. Aaron yeah. Shore arranges his in a oh, circle. Okay. So he's oh. got he's got the darks in the center and the lights on the outside. Even his plein air set is arranged in a circle. 
Huh. But it's the color wheel. Right. And the same way you would have okay. your values in the color wheel. Because the values are really more important. I'm just glad you told me. I need to get rid of all of these doing. housing units. Yes. And um, because I do find that I forget and arrange my hards to my softs. So that's good. And I would get rid of pastels that really aren't much good. Well, no, I have. <laughs> I actually bought these from Jerry's. They were probably like seven bucks for a little set. And it's just because I've been playing around with um, color. extreme colors. Mm -hmm. And so it's just um, a fluorescent that, yeah, I mean, but no, those are those are hard. They're kind of on the cheaper. They're more of a chalky kind of hard. Mm -hmm. um, They've got a lot of chalk in them. Yeah. The other thing about Unisons is there's a uniform gray through all the Unisons. Their entire thousand piece set mm -hmm. has a uniformity by them adding a gray to it. Oh, so they okay. have so a, they have a special kind of uh, harmony in their yes. own. All right, well, thank you, Sarah. I but they're the only it. brand I know that does that. <laughs> Jason said, um, happy to be Nice, a beautiful yeah. model, Rose. Right, right. Yeah. She was, she, okay, let's, she, this is like Willa? 20 years ago. No, she lived down the street from us. Her name was Georgia, uh, but it was 20 years ago. Uh, and I did this drawing when Sue was doing one of her online classes. I did it for Sue. Um, I While would run he was the, helping me. I would do the technical stuff for the camera uh -huh. stuff over here. And so it took three hours. That, so I just did this drawing while I was from a photo that I took. Yeah, you can try and like make it interesting. You know? Someone asked on our live Patreon live board, who did about that. How you, she's having so much trouble doing uh, clothing. And so as they, she was saying, just simplify it. Just simplify it. But I was saying also, make it the opportunity to just do it. Yeah, so the more interesting. Yeah. You know, and you don't have to paint every single flower. Uh huh. Turn it into a shape. You know? Hi. <laughs> this was the pastel that I did in our model session. And to be perfectly honest with you, it's, it's a little bit average. I decided to use this light green paper, and I regret doing that. Um, at the time, I had kind of was going back and forth between like a darker paint or paper, like a darker green or a darker purple, and I chickened out. For some reason, I just chose this lighter one, and I feel like it's just a little bit too underwhelming. And um, so, you know, when you do something like this, I was thinking, well, what if I took a darker pastel you know like a darker blue or something and just see what happens in the background so let's see because i feel like the background and the skin are just too similar so this is the first thing that i do is the first thing you do is try and change the value around it to see if the value of the face now to be perfectly honest with you the phone kind of makes my drawing maybe a value or two darker. I think we all know that about what phones do, right? They kind of over contrast stuff. So it actually looks more contrasty in my phone. <laughs> um, so just making a darker background, now the face looks a little bit lighter. I don't think I had this darker blue when I was there or who knows, I don't know. So making the, the background just a little bit darker. And now I'll have to go in and just in some areas in the eyes, 
slight mitt in the nose. I won't even darken the lips at all. And then possibly a few darks in the hair and hopefully I can make it a little bit more interesting. Um, but I just wanted to talk about the fact that I could tell I chickened out. I chickened out using the darker paper and I realized that when I was using darker paper with my pastels, I was getting much more of a pow. So, but yeah, that's what I did on our open model session with Rose. I went in and put a few darks. It's the same kind of raspberry, but just slightly darker in the eyes, a little bit in the hair. I did go over some of the pinks with a little bit of blue just to temper them down. Um, it's not a huge change and I wasn't even looking at, you know, the photograph I took of her or anything. It was all just sort of out of my memory. And that's what I'm trying to do when I work on things afterwards so that I don't go crazy and then start to just keep working. Now, even while I'm looking at this, I think, oh my God, do I need a prettier half tone right there? Oh, I mean, you can just keep going and keep going and keep going. So, you know, maybe I'll put something there, who knows, but um, it's a study that does not need to be worked out completely. But I do felt like I just didn't have dark darks and that's what I needed to actually fix. Yeah, it looks very, yeah, it's a video. Michael, Michael, do you like the top one? <laughs> uh, I like the, uh, yeah, no, I think, I think it is neat. I like how you can still see the white strokes. It's like an oil pattern. You it know, does. Like a, a it totally. I think it's really cool, and I like how he made that box. Here's the Here's the black. You look nice, big class today. <laughs> are, would somebody let our model in? <laughs> in our bathroom. I know, I know. This door automatically locks. These are the little pastels I did on black paper. These are the first ones, so I'm trying to figure it out. And they're really quicker poses, so you don't get to do that much to them. And then they get a little bit longer. So it's really just a very light pink and a medium pink, and then just using the black to kind of clean up the edge a little bit. And then here, Scott, show me. I don't think I got to see the very last okay. drawings you did. Let's see. That um, the uh, reclining one. Reclining. Ooh, nice. I do. I do like. I you have to say her expression is pretty funny. Yeah, I. I she I, does I, look a little bit like she's in pain. Yeah, <laughs> like she's that, been yeah. slain by a. Uh, oh yeah, that's a beautiful one. Yeah. Oops. Oops. <laughs> no, because yeah, uh, we were saying how we really like the uh, the way you're doing the white. And so Scott, you pretty much are doing that white at the end. So you just focus on the drawing and the shadow patterns and then the yeah. whole lights are completely clean and so I'm not really modeling and I'm yeah. just lightening up the whole pattern and trying to make it it's interesting. Just creating strokes. design so you kind of make you do that during break. Oftentimes I do it if I have time I'll do it when the model's still up, these longer ones, but uh -huh. most of the other ones I do just once the model's finished. Um, or even at home I'll do it. You know, I'll just add some right, right. in there. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's fun. These are very quick and fun. So that one I didn't add white. I'll just add white later. Yeah. I'll do a little more designing on Oh, okay. So you kind of just ones. like even work on them and because you're you're making up some of its stuff. Yeah. It doesn't have to necessarily be. Once you got the basic thing. Hyper realistic. In fact, the nudes These really are, the are really beautiful not being hyper-realistic because then they become too literal in a way. Yeah, these are the real quick ones, so we don't have time to do too much other than get the sketching. Cool. All right, well, thank you. Right. Class is over. Now we have to put the model stand.
That is one messy palette. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you. That's a compliment. That's a compliment? <laughs> like, wow. That makes me, it reminds me of what my closet looks like. <laughs> I'm afraid to go in your closet. I know, I'm afraid to go in my closet also, and it gives me anxiety. <laughs> afraid to go in my palette. <laughs> afraid, I'm, afraid to, I'm afraid to go in your palette, yeah. <laughs> that is a lot of goop. It's just like my painting. That's right. Okay. So are you going to finish your painting from the photo? I don't know. I don't know. I usually I don't. I usually if I finish them, I don't use the photo. Well, meaning that you'll work on it later. I might. I know I'm going to work on mine. This isn't even like this anymore. Oh, so we're showing the... Um, Sarah really wanted me to make sure I use this barrier cream and obviously I bought it, but I haven't used it forever. So she's just reminding me to use the barrier cream again because pastels on your fingers. I remember um, going to OPA once and there was an art guy there who said, I think the two most dangerous art careers are sculpting and pastel. I can't remember which one was more dangerous but I mean I, I do see it I do see all this stuff in my fingers but today Sarah is going to help me do what is this called the French way what <laughs> there's no there's no cutting this is all just YouTube what? <laughs> okay the more bloopers okay. the better <laughs> well back back to uh, the dangers of pastels mm -hmm. you can either breathe the dust that's yeah. one of the dangers and they do make this um, uh, air evacuation system that you yeah. turn the fan on and it takes all the dust out. But a better, I'll, I'll demonstrate a better way to control the dust in a second. The other way to get it is through your fingers and that's mostly the ones that are um, heavy metals. So your cobalts, it's just like... Um, You're scaring me now. So I really have been just putting pigment into my body. <laughs> the earth colors are less okay. toxic than... Uh, some of the ones that in oil would be cadmiums or cobalts okay. or that. All right. Now, but what about those like pigments, hospital so gloves? What about those plastic hospital those gloves? Those are the best. Because I those do have best. some of those. Okay. Okay. So the other thing about about um, protecting yourself from pastels is a lot of people wear what they call finger cots, yeah. which are just little three or four fingers that you're actually going to have. I did have those up. a while ago. Our friend Marsha gave some to me and I just find that I'm lazy and I don't, who knows where I put them, but I did have those because mm -hmm. then they don't get your whole hand hot. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the best. So try that. Okay. So what this is, is um, there are two ways to frame pastels in our world, which is the way that's done in the United States and the way that's done in France. And, the reason for the difference is the interaction between the glass and the... Before we do this, is there... Can you frame your pastels with plexiglass, even the high-end museum non-glare plexiglass? It doesn't work for me because the refraction coefficient, as they call it, between the plexiglass and, the, and museum glass is varies so greatly that... Can you explain what that word is? Well, it, it means the way the light works as it goes through it and the degree to which then it will pick up the uh, crystalline structure of the, of the pastel once the viewer is trying to see that crystalline structure of the pastel. So you're saying with pastels, pastel you should always use glass. Yes, always. And never museum plexiglass. Oh, wow. Because, you know, for some people like me, we, if we have to ship stuff across country, it is very scary to, like, ship. How do you make it so safe that you... You have to put it within a box, within a box, within a box. I mean. I've shipped glass and been worried about it. Yeah. Particularly large glass. Yeah. Uh, and I've only done that once. And it just, small ones, particularly, they're safer if you put them in these yeah. quote unquote sandwiches that we're going to frame this. So this in. is just a cheap plastic thing that, you know, come with those cheap, cheap frames that we bought from Jerry's Artorama. And since she's just doing a demonstration and she asked me to use a pastel that is not one that, you know, is super important because this is just a demonstration that I, I mean, so 
Hmm. Because, you know, I hate spending a lot of money framing, especially pastels, because it's like I think about the shipping, the framing. There is so much overhead that it's hard to make money. It really is. We do need to stop and cut an 8 by 10 Okay. Yes. So you're saying, what is this called? This is called this the This is called Duralar. Um, this particular pad is five thousandths. You need to get three thousandths for oh. what you're going to use this is for. Is that thinner or thicker? Uh, three thousandths would be thinner than five thousandths. Okay. But we were able to find a pad of Duralar. So you're then, telling me we have to use that. We can't use like vellum or we can't mm -hmm. use like the, the acrylic stuff that people You use. could use that, but it's impossible to control. Oh, the way, given what we're that. going to do, you need something that lays completely flat and it's thin and enough. And you to don't like this because manipulate. it has because it, it's a slight. It's a slight. Has no, a, that that isn't it at all. Okay. The reason you use this is that it and is. And banish this. Completely mm -hmm. impervious to letting air through. Paper will eventually oh. let air through, and the, okay. what we're going to do actually is construct what's called a sandwich which is if you pretend this is glass, this piece of plexi, and then the sandwich consists of the glass, the art, the backing, a piece of Duralar. Goes behind the acid-free backing. Goes behind the acid-free backing, which I'll show you how to do it when we actually cut this All and right, get so started. All right, so we'll cut it right now. I didn't make it easy for Sarah. I should have put something like a a solid sheet of paper so that she or a sharp knife or, oh <laughs> you know those, those strange tools that artists use we don't want to be professional we don't, right. we're just we're entertainment we're in an art entertainment video <laughs> okay so for your viewing pleasure i'm going to rip the corner of this out okay i'm going to put the knife away um and then Here's your sandwich. So you have the quote unquote glass. We do need to be yeah, clear yeah. and see it better. Then you have, so totally clean, both mm -hmm. sides, because you don't want to be messing too much with right. it once it's made into the sandwich. And we're gonna use the corner of this table also. Mm. This is framer's tape. It comes in clear and uh, white. We're gonna use white today. But well, when I ordered it, I didn't realize I was ordering white. And Sarah says it's much better to get clear because then you, it's just easier to see what you're doing. But acid-free framer's tape. Okay. And this is what, three quarters of an inch? One, uh, one inch. Oh, okay. One inch. All right, so we have the tape. We have a piece of Duralar cut one quarter of an inch smaller all the way around than the, than the glass. So it's a little smaller, yeah. Did I move that too fast? Okay, yeah. And then we have the piece of art and we have a backing. And those four items go in the same Are size. Are you saying that the foam core is too big? Or the gator board? Something's not the same size. But when you do it for yourself, <laughs> just make sure they just are- Just do it more professionally exactly than I did because I cut because, that white thing. Um, yeah, I think the painting's too big. We can oh. at least get it the size of the, um, see that? We can get it the size of the backing. Oh, okay. So, That'll Okay, help. I can cut that down. So if you All can right. cut that. The but lip? The lip. Okay, so um, when we put the tape on, it's got to not show. Oh, you're saying the width between the frame and that, because yes, that's going to come over the drawing. So you just, you need to know how wide that is, because you don't want the tape showing in, at the end of the glass. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Here's the door alarm. 
to an edge of a table. And you told me that when you use real glass, you wear those gloves, those protecting gloves? Yes, I do. Yeah, because you don't want to get a cut. You don't want to get a cut. So see what I did? I just touched it with my finger and it moved. Your, a, a pastel done on a piece of sanded paper won't move against the glass mm -hmm. as readily as a flat piece of uh, real paper uh, will move against this plastic. So that's interesting. Okay, the next thing you do is you find um, a person who's oh, willing to, to try spend, to do a two-person job. Yes, it's a two-person job, even with a small piece, who is willing to stand here <laughs> and hold their hand. See, I moved it. Um, so it's the materials. What so. if you could get some kind of weight? Like um, a... Well... Some kind of glass. you've got to move this, so you're, oh. you're going to be moving it under the weight. And I don't oh. know. I haven't tried that, Sue, so, and that may work. that um, first you put your tape on and then you have your person push the air out where you're gonna bring the tape around okay, on the so center. Okay, so you're telling me it definitely is a two-person job. It's definitely a two-person job because one person has to be holding the tape here. But didn't you tell make... me that you did this all yourself? I did. <laughs> so you were superhuman. Well, How do I you just... do it yourself and then like, like... I know how to hold it and pull okay. toward once I get the tape on the bottom, I can, a big piece, mm -hmm. I'll hold it and I'll push the air. And then I'll wrap the tape around and I'll just right. get it started on the middle. Mm -hmm. 
and then I'll move over an inch and I'll hold it and I'll push and I'll get all this to, the, to that side and then I'll start back in the middle and go this way. And finally, that last inch of, of um, mm -hmm. open mylar to mm -hmm. backing, I go like this and I'm holding it myself. I just go like this and that last piece of tape is there and I just push it over with my thumb. You wanna squeeze as much air out as possible because you made a joke that air and it's stupid stuff that it does. <laughs> air well, does stupid stuff to our pastels. It makes the bellows. Yeah. It has humidity. Yeah. And it has temperature. And you were saying and it that has a static clean I've cloth. learned a lot. I was the one that bought the white tape, but the clear tape is much better. But Sarah said that for this demo, the white tape is obviously better because you guys wouldn't be able to see anything. And also for demo purposes, we actually tested and put it in here. And the point is, is that when you have your piece, your artwork in your frame, you know, sometimes you can see down and you don't want to be able to see tape. thing I sent with all the pastels. Yeah, no, nice, I'm going to so. show. So okay. we took the, all my pastel boxes apart. We're going to use the boxes that I can use. And then we're going to use these old boxes also because they're going to go in drawers. And I told her to start with the colors that I'm most interested in now because this is going to be longer than she can do. She told me that you need to break your pastels in half. See and how that's redder than exactly that? I'm not exactly sure why. Um, because they're more usable in this form, mm -hmm. and they're actually more usable in a smaller form. Okay. Um, and the square ones, like the Terry Ludwig's mm -hmm. and the Blue Earths and the Mary and the Town Diane Townsends, they're more they're made this way and this size because they're actually more usable because okay. you use the side as much as you use. And so the we round have to take the like paper off and break them in half. And she's putting them kind of like a vertical. A vertical so see how that one's redder okay. than oh, okay. this one so the reds on mine go that way i don't know hmm. if you want the reds which I, way you want I, the I, red? I don't care where do you want the reds i just so told you're her to start with the yellows on the right so your reds are actually going to go to okay. the right all right i just told her we're going to do purples first and um because that's kind of what i'm really into and we'll just see how far we get so purples and pinks are probably gonna be all we can do today, but then, all right, so I'm just gonna be bringing her over blue purples first. I'm just happy that she's getting me to do this. Now, I have my new pastels in one of the drawers because mm -hmm. they're hard. Yeah. Do you want your new pastels in with everything else or in a drawer um, separately? I want them all together. All together. Okay. Oh, I think that really excites me to have the hard and the soft right next to each other, playing together, touching, getting to know each other. Oh man. Um, I'm assuming by now everybody knows that new pastel got bought. Oh. And um, whomever bought them no longer sells them as individual pastels. So we have all kept them by number all these years uh -huh. and kept them separate because we draw with them and do different things with them than mm -hmm. uh, soft pastel. Now you can only buy them in sets. So everybody's changing from new pastels, which you can no longer buy individually to create a color, which you can still buy by the number and by the color. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Like with anything, things get bought, you know, then all right, so I'm just going to keep searching for purples and bringing them over to her. So we must have spent at least a good two hours, right? You oh, you were, you worked harder than me, but you were putting all of these know. together. Well, I didn't know. Oops. So it shows that I need a lot more purples. Huh? Well, no. I have a lot of blues. Don't let the boxes decide what and you need. <laughs> don't let the box. I still have all of this, which gives me a panic attack. But it's too much. I can't deal with it anymore. 
but this is what I have at least for now. And it does, it is a lot more pleasing to see colors and values starting to, and I never would have done this if it wasn't for Sarah. So I thank her very much. I'm going to take her out to an Italian restaurant right now because I was exhausted watching her. <laughs> and we're going to lick our hands. And I, and I stepped on a beautiful red, I think Terry Ledwig red pastel, which will never come up. Oh my God, that's so... Oh, Actually, it will with water. Well, oh, but... Oh, John! You saw that! You saw that! I didn't do that on camera. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. It is a true friend to come over and say, let's organize your pastels now because... I fly out here by the worst way. Uh, yeah, she lives in uh, Sedona. Oh, my gosh. All right, let's wash our hands now. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube videos. I love it when people write me about them and I have fun doing them. So I'm so glad that people are enjoying them. Please subscribe and follow me and Scott on our Instagram pages, our website, and also on our patreon.com forward slash Susan Lyon. 